Burn, burn. All right, there we go. <laughs> right, see, I'm ready to go. I'm going to go. Right, so three, two, one. Welcome back, folks, to the WP Tonic Roundtable Show. We do this live around 8.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I've got a great panel. It should be a great show. I've got some great stories. It should be a really great discussion. I'm going to let the panel quickly introduce themselves and then we should be off. Andrew, would you like to introduce yourself to the audience? Certainly, I'm Andrew Parr and I'm currently working with, well, I'm not currently, I am working with Group Paint. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we never know who's working with, with yeah, you week, week to week. Uh, Vito, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Vito. I'm the founder of Atarin.io, a platform that helps uh, web agencies and freelancers collaborate with their clients and systemize their work. Right to your home. So, Tom, would you like to introduce yourself, Tom? Sure. Tom Finelli, founder of Convesio. We are a scalable WordPress hosting company. That's great. And Sally, would you like to introduce yourself? I'm Sally Getch, the WordPress fangirl, organizer of the East Bay WordPress meetup in... Oakland, California. And would Spencer Foreman like, oh! to, uh, like to introduce yourself? I'm Spencer Foreman, and I just discovered that right outside my window is a guy with one of those weed whackers making the humming noise. Uh, so, uh, well, the good news is temporary. your mic isn't picking it up. Do you guys hear it? No, no not really. No, I, I, I can't. Um, so before we go into our main stories, folks, I'd like to talk about my, my major sponsor, and that's Castos. Um, if you're looking to get into podcasting for yourself or for clients, you need a quality platform. And um, I was with a previous um, provider for a few years. It was getting quite expensive because the podcasts had expanded and I was utilizing a lot of storage. And they approached me. They were about half the price Matt Medeus had just moved to them. So I thought if Matt had joined them, they had to be a quality team. So I decided to shelve out and move. They were really helpful. As we were discussing a couple of things, they they said, was I looking for a, a, um, a sponsor? And at the time, my three-year-old one had decided that they were no longer going to support the show after three years. So no problem. And um, we paired up, and I've just been delighted with their service. Um, they've got a really clean interface. They moved over over 600 podcasts to the platform, which wasn't a small task. And it's about half the price. So go over there, have a look at what they've got to offer. I think you're going to be blown away. So let's go into the first story. And... Um, WordPress 5.8 beta release, new blocks, widgets, screens, patterns, directory, and decks. So, Andrew, what did you think of this one? Well, I think the part of the problem with um, WordPress and, you know, highly updated themes and plugins is that there are, there's almost too much information. So you kind of think, okay, well, I've got some new blocks and I've got some new screen patterns and there's been sort of announcements on Twitter or I've just... I've just um, developed a new screen pattern for um, WordPress blocks. And I'm not sure what the purpose of it all is, frankly. But I think it's great that everybody's making progress and, uh, you know, adding to the WordPress block situation. But I'm not sure that I can really absorb all the information that's coming out about Gutenberg. That's, that's, that's my good. view. But I, but I think it's a good thing that it's happening. That's all, that's all I'm saying. It's a bit like the purpose of life. What is the purpose of Gutenberg? There we go. Uh, um, so, Vito, what did you think? Huge update uh, compared to the two usually. Um, what I really liked about this is, uh, first of all, like now you can really see the power, the the um, future power of uh, the um, uh, full site editing uh, uh, function that they're building. Um, you can create all kinds of queries, uh, which I really like. Uh, so I, I, I'm in the mindset that uh, we want to try and reduce plugins because the plugin situation is really going crazy uh, on uh, on most websites. Uh, so um, so I like it. I think that uh, this is a, a good step in the right direction. 
the UI, I'm not really fond of. Uh, I think Spence did something, uh, built a plugin to fix the UI uh, a while ago. Okay. Uh, but uh, but even with your uh, with your amazing skills, I think it still needs uh, some uh, updating uh, to make it a little more modern, a little more a little smoother. Uh, but altogether, a few cool new features that were added. I liked even the you know the it's kind of um, a, a you know like a shiny object. Uh, what do they call this one? The dual uh, dual color thing. Oh, the duotone effect. Duotone, for the, yeah, yeah. I, I'm like, really? We need, we're like, we needed a big announcement for that. Yeah, um, exactly. yeah thanks. But, uh, I mean, some people are really. Yeah, but it's cool. It's things, cool. But, I like. Yeah, it. it's pretty. You know, it's yeah. nice to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Various plugins have been doing it for a while, and and you know that's often the case with things that eventually get built into cores. There were plugins that were doing it for a while, and yeah. then they they finally decided to. Uh, adopted and and it's true as they expand what you can do with the with the core blocks you don't need as many plugins for more blocks um yeah the the main thing is the query loop uh, block i think that's a big one uh, and kudos for that yes so, uh, we'll be working on testing the the widget screen soon um uh, to see how that goes is widgets are certainly a thing that needs that has needed some work for a while uh, all right so tom what did you think of it well, I think that this is just further sort of indication from our last conversation that uh, where WordPress is going and where Gutenberg is going and full site editing and all the blocks that are out there. Uh, I mean, it's just inevitable. This is going to become the de facto standard for building sites. It might not be now. It might be facing resistance. People might still want to have their own tools if they do things in, but the consolidation of features and where we see this going, it's just, you know, I mean, it's inevitable where this ends up. And I, by the way, I think the star of the last podcast that I was on was Sally's cat. So, yeah, it is a star. How can you compete, Tom? You, you stand no chance. Yes, it's, it was WC you know, Fields, right, who said, you know, uh, never get on stage with a with an animal or, uh, or a child uh, because uh, they will I'll, inevitably I'll, upstage you. Uh, uh, Jonathan uh, doesn't care what I think. He only invites me for the cat. Yeah, um, so, well, it's so obvious, isn't it? But uh, I try and disguise it, but uh, I am fascinated by the cat. Uh, our, um, our actual audience figures double when there's cats of children on the show, Tom. It's um, all the effort I put in this show. It's just, you know, I could just put cats on and I would triple the show figures, you know. So, I'm, so Spencer, what, what did you think of this? Yes, I would like to officially welcome back Sally's cat, or one of them. Yeah. Seems, this one is BC. Your cat, your cat seems like it's been particularly needing some affection today. Uh, if she hears me talking, that means that there is attention to be had, and she isn't getting it, and she must change that. And I also want to say hi to Tom. Tom, I didn't get to say hi to you before. Nice to meet you. Hey. Yeah, um, likewise. Um, in terms of... This particular thing, I, I'm going to be rather reserved in my Gutenberg response simply because um, I, I have resigned myself to accept Gutenberg as the inevitable, and the growing pains of this are like dealing with my 20-year-old trying to live on his own. Uh, as much as I think he's out of the house and it's going well, I get a call that a new drama has happened today, and it's like having a 12-year-old again. I think Gutenberg is going to work itself out, but more importantly... The marketplace as it exists, I'm seeing this unusual phenomena relating back to that Vito and Andrew conversation that the consolidation combined with the crazy deal mindset combined with the advancement of all the various page builder plugins combined with the what's happening with the hosting companies like Liquid Web, it's all part of the same process of WordPress as a platform is maturing and my personal involvement, besides being on the show, is to try to help people understand that through WP Launchify, that every other platform starts out with a, here's what we offer, take it or leave it, that's the proposition. WordPress has always been this granola, hey man, what do you want to do kind of thing. But now we're 15, 16 years later and real money, real stakes, real software, real businesses are in play. And we're all playing this accelerated race for the finish game. So last week I made, or two weeks ago, I made that weird proposition that I'm laying my table bet on that the 
Wix folks with their 15 billion in capitalization are going to come in and take a stake in Elementor so that they can now offer a forked version of WordPress as part of that system that is curated by a team of paid engineers. I think that's one of the inevitable outcomes along with a, a two or three or four other respected vertical similar situations. And that's, I think, what's going to happen. Oh. So Gutenberg, carry on, do what you're going to do. But I have a feeling that there's going to be an equally exciting and enticing version of that with Elementor as the native. I think that know, would be great. Or, you know, or, you know the, more, the more plausible um, options you have. Well, because um, you I think about it, like the, the problem that comes up with this race between six or eight companies is, let's say Elementor gets this thing happen okay D does the elementor crowd really need gutenberg i don't think so they just need a container to hold elementor so there's like a you know how how many cars do you need if you're one person at a time you know yeah i think um you brought this up actually last week and i agreed with jonathan as well i think i think if they did that i think it could be quite successful but i don't think it would be a direct challenge to Gutenberg and WordPress, I actually think it would um, actually get more traction from some of the other platforms. But who knows? Um, I agree. Um, I think that's that's a really good point because this the, the WordPress is such a beast. It uh, I don't I don't see a way that it can be beat at this point. You know, with su such a huge market share, especially if you're, all you're doing is you know maybe if someone is coming up with an idea that is so out of the box that it will just kill this industry, uh, which might happen, but uh, but to just create a kind of slightly different version of this, why not just- I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't qualify it as saying beaten. I think what we'd be talking about is like, we all know if you've studied like the cola marketing, right? There's like one or two companies that make all of the sodas or all the colas. They just have different brands and they sell them and market them differently. Even though there might be different owners here, there's nothing that would get rid of WordPress as a, an open source thing. But if the Wix people with their money wanted to have something that was like selling a cola in the WordPress thing, it would be a piece of cake for them to drop a hundred million bucks on the Elementor guys and ta-da, fork WordPress. And now they're selling Wix and they own that type of customer. And now they've got a WordPress customer probably like me, who wants the stability of like paid engineers doing the things in a triage that I think is important. And then there would be the, the legacy. I don't know if they're the engineers that built Wix versus, you know, keep well, I'm just saying like, built like, Elementor. Well, we talk right now about, it makes no sense with $3 billion of capitalization. It makes no sense. That there's 98 unfilled jobs at wordpress.org and why it is that we're constantly talking about Gutenberg drip, drip, drip improving. If they threw $100 million at it, I'm pretty sure they could fix it just as fast as Elementor and all the other private page builders have. Yeah, but this, this goes on to do that. This goes on story two. Um, plug in rank from lockdown side project to my first exit. What did you think of this one, Tom? Well, uh, the SEO guy in me was very, very intrigued. And I'll be honest, I sent this to some friends of mine because, um, you know, I thought it was a very interesting tool i think like a lot of tools like this people are going to be like starry-eyed with the potential of increasing their rank and i just don't know yet how well this thing actually works right and so um it it's there's didn't seem to be a ton of information on the website as to exactly what it does and so um you know it seemed like info was slightly light on it but uh you know, the proof is going to be in the pudding, but I don't think they're going to have any trouble getting a lot of interest in this because this is like the holy grail of rankings, you know, like people want to have more, you know, juice out of the plugin directory. And I can think... You quickly, can you quickly explain to the listeners and viewers what it's supposed to do, Tom? Well, basically think of the plugin ranking. You're asking me this on a, a five minute, you know, review of their website, but you think of this as You're like extremely a, brighter than me. Think, think, of, think of the directory, the plugin directory as a uh, search engine. And when you put in the term you're searching for like donations plugin or form plugin, you're going to get a bajillion results and people are only going to click on the first 
10 or three or five or whatever it is. And so this tool is helping you analyze your profile and give you things to change as well as track your keyword ranking. Uh, and so you can have sort of this prioritize. It's, it's got keyword ranking, which consider the result recommendations on how to optimize your profile. And then it tracks the actual installs, true installs of your plugin, which will show you how much you're growing based on potential rank changes that you have over time. So all of this is great. It's been incredibly black boxed before and a trial and error. And it's cool to see a product that actually gives you at least some sort of organizational approach at managing this. Yeah, it's a shame. Oh, well. Um, Vito, Vito, what did you think of this? Um, so from the tool aspect itself, I can see the need for it for plugin developers that want to, you know, be a little more uh, data driven about their activities, especially with SEO, because the, um, the WordPress marketplace is a huge driver of traffic uh, for plugins. So might as well um, learn how to control it. Right. Uh, so that's from the tool itself. I think the article is more about the journey of, yeah. um, of this um, uh, of this tool uh, from the. Um, from building something as a as really replacing a spreadsheet, as he called it, uh, that he used to kind of manually input this data for himself, just systemizing the work uh, all the way to selling it within a year's time. Uh, I think that the, um, that this mindset is a really cool uh, is a really cool mindset for a lot of uh, listeners and viewers to think about. Uh, because uh, we all did it. Everyone on this on this panel has, has done it. You build something for yourself that you think is gonna be awesome, and then uh, it works. So you bring it to market and you build the company out of it. Uh, but you know, like before, I went on this journey, and I'm sure that it's the same for for a lot of you guys. I had so many ideas, so many spreadsheets that I could have systemized, so many things that you kind of. Uh, uh, keep to yourself instead of taking it to the next level. So I think that I, I look at this as a really cool, um, a, a small side project success story uh, for mm. people to really read yeah. and see what's going on. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think the exciting thing here, and there's a couple of stories this week um, that we should be discussing, but I think the main theme is there seems to be more opportunities <laughs> in the ecosystem to build something and be able to sell it um there seems to be more options andrew what do you, what builds, you what, that's, that's the next project oh you still have it you have it on the next uh, so i'm not gonna ruin the yeah. surprise uh, uh, yeah. right right i mean i put it in here the story in because i know jonathan wants to hear about the the SaaS success stories uh, and, and how it goes, and this was a you know a, a tidy story of somebody who had an idea for something pretty specific with a pretty specific uh, you know market, uh, and uh, got it built and launched. And you know we'll see how it does and whether it continues to be successful. But God knows, like searching for something in the uh, WordPress plugin directory is uh, is very hit and miss in in terms of finding a plugin that does what you actually want it to do. So uh, anything that's going to improve that uh, experience is, is going to be good for users also. Um, yeah, so Andrew, do you, do you agree with me? There seems to be a, um, more opportunities to be able to sell a WordPress business. There's no, more players. No, I don't. I don't no? agree with you. I think what's happened is it's become more transparent. I think people have have been selling, buying and selling plugins all the time. All in one SEO got sold, what, two years ago? Um, you know, uh, I was bought a couple of years ago. That I've sold a couple of plugins a couple of years ago, but it's become, it's just become more transparent that people are selling them. Sometimes, sure. you know, there's, I know of three plugins that are in NDA at the moment, you know, so it's all happening. And I think what's happened is that plugins, there's no, there's no more opportunities what what's happened is plugin developers have are actually going out and saying I'm up for sale rather than letting people come to them and say, can I buy you? And that is what has, has garnered the, the more interest. So maybe, yes, there is more interest, but it's, it's driven by plugin developers realizing that they can monetize what they've, they've been doing rather than people saying, Oh, I want, I like that. I want to buy it. You know, I know of two plugins that got sold. Um, because 
the the actual plugin developer went to um, people with money and said, "Do you want to buy me?" And they said, "Well, we never thought about it, but yeah, I do want to buy you. So why not? It sounds a great idea. I think it's just become more. It's part of the sales process. Is that I've sold my plugin. I'm glad to announce that I've been bought by Delicious Brains or whatever. Mm. Um, and you know, lots of people are doing that. But I mean, I think what we've got to remember is that all businesses are up for sale. It's just what the price is. Yes. All right. Let's go on to story three. Um, full site editing study. Will WordPress theme shops embrace the new paragon? What did you think of this one, Spencer? You're muted. Oh, somebody's yeah. there. Hey, <laughs> I, I didn't even get a chance on the last one. Um, as far well, as I just, I just want to keep it rolling. I, I, so I don't mind. This is I why I chose. This is why I chose you to lead. You chose me for the Gut for the Gutenberg one. Yeah. Um, like you know what's interesting to me is the same conversation, but let's say relating back to what I said before, that the biggest problem we have right now is the competitive nature of the space is one thing. You have not people choosing between one or two page builders, but like five or six. Then you merge that with what is Gutenberg actually going to be? Is it an editor or is it a page builder? And it's it's okay. There's plenty of users to divide into camps, but it's never ideal for a platform to do that. I mean, let's compare ClickFunnels or Shopify or Wix or Weebly or Squarespace. You don't go in there and they say, hey, folks, pick which of the page editors you want to use here or the block editors. That would be insane mm -hmm. for a company as a platform to offer that kind of device. Yeah, but, yeah, but that not that the paragraph that makes WordPress better and different in some ways, that you do have choices, that I, you, you, know, you, you know you have a modularizative... I'm not sure if there's... I've just created that word... System you just, where, by the way, you just did a Norm Crosby on that. Where you just invented like three words combined into one. I love that. Yeah, that's it. You got to, you got to. Oh, we're short of time, so there we go. So, Sally, what did you think of that? Of that I, well, I think it's interesting that that uh, uh, you know it says only seventeen percent of theme shops offer custom Gutenberg blocks. Blah blah blah. Um, uh, but, you know, 86% of the theme shops uh, think that full site editing is a breakthrough. 82% uh, of them are following the FSE news. 22% of them are working on a, an FSE ready theme. Um, you know, only 9% of them are contributing to the development by feedback or, or code. Um, but it's, you know, I mean, that's a large number. Uh, uh, that aren't, and I suspect a, a reason for it is that, oh yeah, things keep changing. Like you get something uh, uh, built to be compatible with the way that core blocks are set up, and then oh, oops, we changed the class names on that. So uh, well, uh, I, I, yeah, that I, that's that's an issue. But it, if the theme shops aren't going to keep up with this, I think they're either going to have to like. Uh, follow Jonathan's, uh, you know, we're going to turn into to a different platform entirely uh, or go out of business. Yeah, um, Tom, uh, it, must be a, it must be a nightmare to be a theme shop in 2021. With, it must be an absolute nightmare, must not it? Yeah. I don't I, know. Uh, They're having a good time at, at uh, <clears throat> Studio Press. Um, uh, busy. Uh <clears throat> But yeah, but it, well, it's kind of it's a it's not you know it's a big business, but in a way, it's a size side hustle for WP Engine, isn't it? Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I, Studio Press would have been in a totally different situation if they hadn't been acquired you know, by somebody it, who could afford to put a, a exactly. lot of money. I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking about Tom. I'm talking Tom about the independent theme shop. You know, it must be a bit of a nightmare now, mustn't it? Tom? Yeah, and I think you're going to see if not a consolidation of this, a lot of stuff that people are frustrated and there are these theme developers like, I can't keep up with this, you know? And the, I mean, it's like, if you don't, if you're not at, not at that critical mass of a theme shop, right? Like how much time and energy and effort do you have to, and, but besides the fact that this is a lot of change that is coming down the road. And as people start to gravitate more to Gutenberg, and, and all of this built-in WordPress functionality, users are going to be like, you either have to, I love your theme, but you either need to support this or I'm going to move. 
right? And so you're, I think that this is a potentially risky time for a lot of theme shop builders as they, they have to evaluate, like, do I put all the energy and effort into trying to keep up with these releases and these updates and do all the work when it's maybe not, it's a side hustle business. Yeah, exactly. So, Vito, so what do you reckon? That would be a nightmare being in this, uh, in this, in their shoes uh, right now, especially if you have like a, you know, a style based type of theme, uh, the framework ones, which, uh, which is, um, which is, it, these heavily these heavily style ones are the ones that got a future and they're the ones that are suffering at the present moment aren't they Vito? yeah these are the, these are the ones that really I, I don't see uh, um, I don't see the future in that um I, I now I would even uh, have to say that like um let's say six months ago or a year ago I was thinking there's still gonna be a place for these guys because you know DIYers want to buy something and just splash it on and it works you find it on co on uh Theme Forest or something like that. Uh, but, uh, we, but back then, we didn't have the concept of F FSE. Uh, um, so now, I think that their best bet is to go after their own existing clients and just offer um, uh, templates. Uh, if, if their strength is in the design, then, you know, you can offer like Gutenberg templates. That is going to serve. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> what I did. I, um, I'm I'm surprised you say that because I actually disagree with you there. Um, I actually think, well, somebody, the tax man wants Andrew. Uh, um, so, oh, yeah. uh, uh, right, there we go. Uh, um, so, um, I, I actually thought, I actually disagree with you there, Vito. I actually think that there will be always a market for those that just looks at a really nice theme design and wants to quickly get a website up and running. And that's yeah, but, where. But that's going to happen with the, that's what full site editing is all about. So if you were able to just export the full site edited, uh, so you get the same yeah. experience as a, as a theme anyway. Uh, so yeah, like I mean, when it's done, it's going to open a lot of opportunities mm. for people who are designers. And basically mm. you created an HTML template theme and can put it out mm. there. But, yeah. but the, the folks who are stuck in the transitional phase. It's a nightmare. Uh, yeah, that's well, that's Astra hard. have done it. I mean, Astra have had Gutenberg blocks in in Astra for a year, more than yeah, a year. Right? Yeah, well, the, yeah, but they, but it, you know, they, they've got they're a framework. They've got two hundred developers, though, Andrew. Aren't they? Yeah, but that, I mean, you know, that then you have to put a theme shop. You have to adapt. You know, you have to plug in developers. We have to adapt. Look at what Atarim has done. It's now it was a plug in. Now it's a, a SaaS. You know, look at what Conv Convicio have done. You know, mm -hmm. they've gone from small to medium to large, you know, and you just have to adapt. And there's grow it's growing. Tom, tell me you haven't had growing pains, right? No. Yeah, it's part of the game. game. It's it's part of, yeah, it's part of you know, I took over 22 plugins the other on the 10th of May. I've redeveloped them to be page builder, uh, you know, visual builder friendly on uh, in, in, le in just over a month, you know, 60% of them. So, it hurts. Tell me, listen, I, I haven't had any sleep for a month. We've, we've been developing these things. Oh, and, and, I, 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 I can tell, Andrew. I can tell. Really? Yeah. And, Hence the coffee. <clears throat> and Spencer, how many how many times have you had to reiterate launch flows and add things to it and templates and, and, and increase the offer, make the offer better? I mean, I will say, because launch flows is agnostic, the conversation I flip is like this. I Every day, a hundred people ask the same question: Does it work with Oxygen? Does it work with Brizzy? Does it work with Divi? Does it work with Elementor? Does it work with this? Does it blah, blah, blah. And I say, Hey, guess what? We decided it's short codes for everybody except for Elementor because Elementor has like whatever twenty million users by now, and that's where it's going to stay because of this problem. And I will relate this to a different conversation. I we're in conversations now with some of the theme developers who realize. The shit has hit the fan. It's on the wall that their days are numbered if they don't figure out a way to put a bunch of stuff together to survive. So the theme builders, like you're referring to like the one-offs, like the Envato folks, th th their death certificate has already been written out. It's just waiting to be delivered. But the actual ones that survive of the page builders are going to be the ones that get enough people in the audience to starve off the other ones. Because I don't see this being able to go on for more than another year. 
it's just really, really difficult to take a, a very healthy marketplace and confuse the hell out of what's already confusing, right? It's bad enough that you have to explain. That's what we're doing. W why is WordPress.org versus .com? But when you have to then bifurcate that into, now the themes have 20, and then there's a page builder, and then there's 67 LMSs, and blah, blah, blah. It's, come on, it's too much. At some point, somebody has to win, and it has to become a platform. And that's why I, I go back to my original point, which... I think it's going to be solved not from WordPress.org. It's going to be solved from a well-funded independent company yeah, that puts totally. together the right pieces and says, ta-da, here's the platform you've all been waiting for that's the same stuff over there without the confusion. Right, yeah. We're going to go for our break. When we come back, we've got some other great stories to discuss, and this one particular one I'm just looking forward to. Uh, um, we'll be back in a few moments. We're coming back. We've had a insightful discussion, I think. Andrew seems in a reasonably good mood. Uh, um, so uh, um, <laughs> I'm just waiting for the comments. Um, so before we go on, I want to talk about one of our great sponsors. And we've got the CEO of the company here, um, Converse, Conversio. Um, I'm going to let you, um, Tom... You know, it's a great product. It's aimed at if you're looking for high performance hosting. What, 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 what of it are you the most proud of, Tom? Actually, well, <clears throat> I think that um, you know it's infrastructure agnostic. So we run on Google, we run on Amazon. Um, but you can deploy Nginx, you can deploy Apache, you can um, deploy Lite. And so that's a unique aspect of it. So if you're a developer and you want to develop in different environments or use different environments for different sites, you can do that. Um, the other thing that's really cool is the ability to do auto scaling. So it's container based, it runs in Docker containers. And so uh, it uses a clustered database and we don't deploy anything on one server it's spread out across a cluster of servers and when you get a spike in traffic the system can automatically deploy more containers for your site so you don't have to change billing plans you don't have to upgrade you don't have to move to a larger server you know during a surge in traffic when your site's down any of those things is like a mess you, the traffic's gone by the time you've migrated or changed billing plans or any of that stuff. So with zero human intervention, you can scale resources and then they can automatically scale it back down. And so you only pay for when you have the spike in traffic. And if you don't want to do any of that, you can turn it off and uh, or you can manually scale it up all in the control panel really easily. Just fantastic. Um, you can, I think you can hear, you know, it's an amazing platform. And also Tom has been so gracious. Um, it's the first time that him and his company has done this. Um, if you go to the WP Tonic website, to the show notes or any way, anywhere around on the WP Tonic website, you'll see links and banners. You click one of those, you'll be taken to a specific landing page and they're offering 30% off the lifetime of any of their packages. It is truly an amazing deal. And thank you, Tom, for doing that. Um, I know it's it was a great deal that you're offering. You really do want to go and have a look at what they've got to offer and take up one of their packages. So we go forward. We go forward. Um, WordPress economy drives more than half a trillion in revenue. Wow. So, Andrew, what did you think of that one? Well, not really surprised. Anyone surprised by that? Not no. given all the, you know, recent acquisitions and rounds of funding and this and that. No, I just want a little bit about. of it, Andrew. I just want but a little some, bit of it. Uh, basically, it, it, is that what it means? Is it 596.7 billion for us, the developers and the people that build websites and plugins? No, unfortunately or is it not. The, not is, it the drive, is it the drive for e-commerce? You know, we've got Shopify that in a year, under a year have grown by 150% share value. We've got other companies growing by 200, 300% share value. We've got hosting companies that are 
onboarding people at you know at 200 and at 200 people a minute or something you know it's just getting absolutely ridiculous is what's that been driven by it's been driven by the pandemic it's been driven by people's awareness that, that they can build a website in half a day or a day you know the page builders have contributed to this you can build a website in 45 minutes if you've got the content so i'm not really surprised and i and I'm surprised that what I'm surprised at is that is the is the lack of growth. You know, it's going to, only going to go from five ninety six to six thirty five by the end of twenty twenty one. I I would have thought that it's gone. It would be more eight hundred, nine hundred. You know, to a to a trillion. You know, whatever the trillion is in in America, but it's it doesn't really. Well, Andrew, a trillion a trillion in America isn't what it used to be. It's cup right of tea, way. mate. It's a cup of tea. A cup of tea. You know, but the point, the point is, is that is that we have what this what this says is that if you weren't on the wordpress train before or the website train or the e-commerce train before it's not too late because there's going to be a 200 million increase within the next 12 months of of 200 billion rather um, increase within the next 12 months so you know whatever you're thinking of doing or whatever you're doing and you're not doing it online get on it get online you know get your business online and, and and sell whatever you need to sell whether it's services coaching steaks you know we've got a great client that is selling meat fresh meat well you can't beat a bit of fresh meat you can't yeah. beat a bit of fresh meat and they're yeah. doing so well it's crazy you know so get a lot, on it. A lot, a lot of it hasn't got bad, bad cows disease <laughs> <laughs> i didn't say beef uh, but yeah. anyway, so you know, right. the, we've got we've got opportunities here, and we've got um, we've got to exploit them as, to the best of our ability, and that's why we exist. This is why we, you know, all of us exist, from the feedbacks to the hosting to the to the um, funnel building to the building of websites to the podcast to to get this out there. That if you're not on the WordPress or the website e-commerce train, get on it now. That's you're that's what, that's what this demonstrates to me. So what do you reckon about this, Sally? Uh, well, I, I was uh, uh, impressed at the uh, uh, the glossiness of the report. I mean, the, you know, the article I linked to is is basically a, <clears throat> uh, a fancy press release. So, of course, it's got a lot of um, WP Engine chest beating. Only, only we, a little bit. Only, are, 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 only slightly. Aren't we awesome? Uh, but the... Uh, the actual uh, report, I think, is, is nicely done. I checked. It's Beaver Builder, in case you're interested. Um, <laughs> with the, the numbers and the uh, infographic and the ebook and the uh, <clears throat> and the layout and, and, and so on. But... Oh, the cat's back. Oh, God, that yes. cat. I, I, I'm, um, amazed, I'm amazed at your ability, Sally, to keep on talking with you know with any logic to it as the cat is jumping all over you. Well, the cat is here all the time, so you know either I learn to uh, uh, continue interacting when the cat is here, or I simply stop doing anything, uh, which the cat would be fine with if I did nothing but pet the cat. Uh, but in in any case, uh, you know I think they've. Uh, you know, pr produced a nice little uh, portfolio there, and that Andrew's absolutely right. That you know, yeah, there there is uh, there is still room to get on board if you want to be uh, part of uh, this economy. <laughs> I, think, I think Spence is losing his mind. He looks in stunned I, silence. I, I'm used to the cat. As long as the cat, as long as the cat doesn't go tail up on her face, I'm fine. But like, yes, it is. It's at least being polite about it. It's, Tom, yeah. very, it's very close. I think Tom's still shocked about this show. You, you really don't. Yeah, all right. There we go. Um, so, what did you reckon about this, Tom? Well, <clears throat> I think this is great because this is awesome to have this quantified by someone as credible. I mean, as a person who is raising money for start, you know, a startup, these sort of stats have been difficult to get from a really credible source. And make no mistake, this is all happening for their IPO. Okay, I mean, this is all part of the narrative that's being told to investors for their IPO, and you know, it's one of these things that is going to be used by startups trying to raise money, saying, "Look, see how you know big this." ecosystem is so i i'm i love it i love this report came out it was great uh and so i'm excited to see more mature research like this come out from credible names instead of 
the starty the startup scrappy folks have to literally try and piece this together. All right, Vito and Spencer, I'm going to jump to because um, I don't want this to be war and peace. And I'm, well, I I'm want gonna... to hear Vito's perspective on this. All oh, right, then, all right, then, go on, Vito. I, I was actually part of the research. Uh, I've been working with that oh, right. for the past year on this thing. Uh, with meetings and stuff, I uh, went to their London office here as well for like a focus group around this thing. Uh, it was a really interesting process to go through. So here we're just seeing like the end numbers of what has been going on, but the process of getting to this and the effort that they've put into this, like with, uh, you know, it's not just a number that we find in a Google search. Right, uh, like uh, there's proper uh, researchers. Uh, ac this is like a proper academic research that they've done to get to this number. I was really surprised by the end uh, result uh, because when I did my research, uh, it was really not even 10% of this. Uh, uh, you know, from uh, from when I did not not with the researchers when I did my Google search uh, before this came out. So um, so I did drill in a little bit more than what you see here on the report as to what this uh, what this um, uh, includes. You know, what does the six hundred billion dollar mean uh, for because it's such a huge number? Mm. I think it just goes to most people just over their head. You know, you don't really realize what what this means. Uh, uh, having being part of an industry that is uh, really, as they say, like the thirty fifth country in the world in terms of uh, uh, you know, in terms of uh, 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 revenue. Uh, so, uh, and, and this is again, uh, I was, when I heard this number, I thought, was, is that lifetime revenue for WordPress 15 years? And no, no it's like a yearly revenue that is generated. So that include that does include, um, uh, you know, a, a, a agencies and uh, the products, and that includes uh, money that is coming from outside. So the past year has been great for WordPress uh, when it comes to this. Um, or even since 2019, with uh, with with VC money starting to uh, to kind of find its way into this into the ecosystem, uh, but this also means uh, shops that are running on WordPress. Uh, so so that really um, inflates the number, you know, because Andrew's Meat Shop is in here, you oh, know. Uh, so so that really kind of puts things a little bit into perspective. Uh, uh, that uh, that you know, like it's basically it's from every industry in the world that is using WordPress to drive sales to generate money using the system. Uh, so it's not that thing. What I really found interesting, and and this is actually something that I'm gonna do a a, a, a webinar to my users about, is the fact that the more people use it, they found like they found scientific proof that people that use the website more generate more money out of it. And the percentage or the number that I associated with this is uh, uh, users who work with WordPress more than 15 hours a week uh, derive 48% of their income from the platform. And so for all of those clients that are just looking at the website as a, as a, as a flyer on the web, you know, uh, um, like I think that this is our responsibility as, a, as agency owners to educate them and to tell them this figure, um, like there is, there is, Scientific proof that if you spend 15 hours a week looking at the website, working on your website, thinking about your website, promoting your website, driving traffic onto it, you're going to make 50% of your revenue coming from it. Right. Are you, you sure that. that they've got... Yeah, because the Sally, I, 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 Sally, Sally, I, I want to get on to the next story because okay. I don't know. Right, thanks, thanks. I think John has uh, a date Send there. me in the chat, Sally. Yeah, send me just, uh, right, uh, why are we on such... Why is, where's the rush today? Did I miss the... the Announcement? Are we, he's are we all here at 1120 today or something? He's just being um, a control freak. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'll, I'll I think it's 1117 and we're on the fifth uh, story already. Where are we oh, going? I'll, 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 I'll think the next you one's going to go? Do you have some? No, no, no. I'll you think the, the next <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am That's the moderator good. of this show. I just enjoy so. saving uh, my time with you every uh, Friday. Yeah, I'm sure. You're the Rod Six for that, right? On to the next one, and I'm going to jump to story six. And I'm really interested in Spencer's um, view of this particular story. I'd be intrigued. We talk about WordPress plus other technology stories, and story six is about cryptocurrency and something called Tether. So, Spencer, yes, what, do, what do you make 
of Tether. Meow. Um, Tether is apparently along the lines of WeWork. It's the WeWork of the cryptocurrency. Uh, in a nutshell. Can you, ex- can you explain quickly what Tether is? Actually? Yeah, I'll try. Um, Tether is known as a stable currency versus whatever the other cryptocurrencies would like to call themselves so that it's tied to a, a real world currency one to one. So the notion is that they claimed it's like it's like the Rosetta Stone of cryptocurrency. You could take your real world money and use it to buy into cryptocurrencies by way of Tether. And the assurance that they were providing was that there was a backing one to one with real currency. So in other words, when you own that currency, you would have allegedly no risk of the variable up and downs that you see in things like Dogecoin and uh, and Bitcoin and so on and so forth. As it turns out, just like WeWork promised that they owned a bunch of stuff worth money, but the owner was using it for private jets to yoga in Belize, uh, apparently it turns out that Tether really never had the money in the bank. They were just moving money around to different accounts. So while it doesn't seemingly turn out that anybody suffered as a result of this, it was sort of the lie of of the underlying premise upon which their business was built that bothers everybody. So it's kind of like it's kind of like if your bank was lending out money, but the bank was the bank of Bernie Madoff, where well, they were just I think being, I, I personally think it opens up even more because what was what was the amazing fact in the FT piece, the Financial Times, was that they now have they're the seventh largest holder of world of commercial paper. What did you think of that, Spencer? Well, because this is where the problem comes in. If you've got a shell game going on and it's in cryptocurrency, there's no structure to regulate that. Uh, one of my girlfriends for a long time was in the, the banking industry regulation. And with regular banks and regular paper and regular currency, they have a million ways to Sunday to go back and cross check and reference what the banks are doing, what the customers are doing. Here it's cryptocurrency. So there's not really an easy way for anybody to go back and audit uh, something that has crypto keys protecting every single uh, you know coin. So they have a real kind of work cut out for them problem. Now, I can relate it to something that happened that was interesting about how the real world works versus the perception. Remember that our gas prices went from like $1.50 to $4 recently because these hackers allegedly shut down the East Coast pipeline with a uh, extortion racket? Well, it turns out that they got their millions of dollars, but that like five minutes later, the guys with the insider knowledge were able to locate the bank or if you will the digital wallet where they sent the money and hack into it and get the money back so the truth is the way that this story is going to end is you're going to hear in a week or two that whoever is running tether is going to find that all their money has been taken over by the federal government well well, yeah and he would deny this but um broke pierce is behind you know he's one the actual directors of tether to say they are a mockly crew of rats and cockroaches would be a slight understatement. But, but the real force behind there is this broke Pierce. And if you investigate his background, it doesn't, you, you, why would you invest any money with that individual is beyond my capacity. But, but that's not even the story anymore. I mean, I don't know where this will exactly end, but I can bet... This is going to end with some arrests, indictments, and arrests. Because I would have would say it's it's really extraordinary that, and I don't know how that ended, but that 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 the WeWork didn't end that way. And the only reason I think it didn't end that way, at least for the for the American side of things, was because the Asian investor was so embarrassed or something that he just decided to suck up the billions of dollars that he lost and get on with his day. Whereas in this case, you're sort of screwing with the U.S. government and the U.S you know, a taxation system and so forth. So I have a feeling there's definitely some people that are very excited about So, Tom, what did you reckon about this? You know, in any business, any, you know, you've got to go through the pain of any large sum that you transferred to a bank. They ask you a thousand questions, don't they? They they want to take a blood sample from you and a DNA um, test. But these cockroaches, you know, are... Um, 
I, I, I actually, I was wondering what was going to be the Black Swan event that takes down this boom, boom market. I think we just found it, haven't we, Tom? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. It's it's hard to say. You know, I have been really uninvolved with Bitcoin, despite many, many folks and cryptocurrency, despite many of my circles being heavily involved. Um, you know, but I, you are right. Traditional large sum transfers of money are a big pain in the butt. And so, you know, I don't know at this point. I, I just, it feels like there might be a lot more hype than actual reality involved in this tether play now, i was going to ask you andrew when you when somebody you don't know comes to you to do business with you you probably check about their past on google don't you andrew you no, have a little I, I bit use, i use experian because it's global so no i do if it's a large transaction yes yeah, certainly if it's over sort of five ten thousand dollars which we do a few a year of those but uh, you know I do check, but most are referred um, anyway. So they're kind of known but and they're, they're established business. But I just, I always do a credit check anyway, because that helps my credit insurance. So as long as I've done a credit check and then I get knocked, I get, pay, I get paid out anyway. So I'm, you know, and I've been doing that for 30 years. So um, I always do check, but we've, I mean, I'm doing something at the moment where, you know, a friend of us, a friend of mine, it, it, you know, advised me to invest in a certain, thing and i invested in a certain thing and i've happened to have made a little bit of money on it but it's not partic it's not regulated or it's not officially regulated mm. but there's so many people in it that you think right okay well that'll do and and yeah we've had we happen to have made some money on it so that's that's quite good i mean it's all in this as well but you know if you haven't got a pension like i haven't you know you either sell a company which i did or and you, and you invest in some yeah. things that are that, that that are interesting and but you still which i still checked it out you know there were some negative reviews there were some positive reviews but you just generally check it out and then you take a you take, you have a gut feel about it and and then also if you the, the the main thing about investing in anything is that if you can't afford to lose it if you can't if you can't it. live if you if you lose it if you can't live it if you lose that money then don't don't do it, you know. Because you know, choose something safe where you're going to get point naught 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 one percent income a year. You know, because the interest rates around the world are stuffed. So, but if you've got an opportunity to earn, say, you know, if you if you do uh, buy to let or something, you can earn six percent a year or ten percent a year or whatever whatever it may be. But also, if you do FX trading, if you do some crypto, you do whatever you can make. But were you, you were you personally shocked by the size of te that tether? And to me, it's a classic pump and dump boiler house operation. As far as I'm concerned, I'm never surprised about the naivety of people with money and what they do with their money. I'm never surprised because otherwise we wouldn't have the the you know the spammers and the people that phone you every day and say oh you know you got to give me six hundred dollars because i'm from microsoft and i'll fix your computer and it, then it ends up to oh well actually i'm gonna it's gonna be two thousand you know i was i was watching a, a documentary well, yeah, the, the other day this one person in america IRS got taken for 12 grand cards. Um, she got taken for 12 grand you know by by a micro by a supposed microsoft engineer you know so i'm never ever surprised by people getting conned out of things because there's some very persuasive people out there, and some people are, are particularly naive as well. So, Vito, what, what do you, you know, there seems to be this community of Bitcoin and um, people, and they, they all seem to have migrated to Puerto Rico because they don't have to pay any tax. And they're this kind of libertarian kind of sub hippie culture. Um, and, um, when you pull the veil, which the veil's been pulled on Tevo, it's not so hippie and it's not so attractive, is it? At, um, I, I look at, the, at crypto as a whole as like a social movement, really, uh, at this point, uh, more than, um, you know, it was it was meant to become like a replacement of currency. All of this stuff was meant to become like replacements of currencies, <coughs> but instead it just became like a super volatile investment tool. Uh, that, uh, you know, some people uh, uh, did well without really them knowing anything. It's like it, it, it's 
it's the most bet that you can make, you know, like there is no m much more than that from all that I can see. You just put your money is and you, you hope for the best. Uh, um, and then maybe it will work out. Uh, maybe it won't. Uh, so I go with, with what Andrew is saying, you know, when it comes to, you know, like the, the, the financial aspect of it, I never looked at it as a hippie type of thing. Um, I, I think that, um, that redistributing the power is in its essence is a good idea. You know, this redistributing the power from the, uh, taking it away from banks and then, and, and this kind of stuff. But, uh, but really that's not what this is about. Maybe that's the, um, maybe that's the about us page. You know what I mean? That's like the, 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 what they say on the about us page, but really that's not what this, this, this whole concept is about it's just an investment tool uh but my problem with it is that it that it's like there's there's um a, a, an investment can't be a bet you know like it's if it's a if it's a bet it's a bet it's not an investment mm. uh so uh but people look at it as like as, as something that that uh that will you know for sure go up like they look at it's like real estate or like uh, distributing a portfolio of assets in uh, uh, on, on the stock market it's really it's not that at all you know, i think that's a good look at it really because um you look at the history of some of these people i think their chief counsel um, lawyer um is from the online betting industry and he's to say he's got a spotty history is an understatement. It was just when I investigated these people and their history, I thought to myself, who the hell would touch these people with a barge pole? Uh, what do you just a minute? What do you reckon about it? It doesn't, like, matter. it doesn't matter from that aspect because it's it's the headline in the newspaper, you know, in the financial newspapers that uh, that drive people to take these actions, uh, or the majority of the market moves. Based on uh, you know newspaper headlines uh, and and looking for the the, the quick, quick kill you know but uh, but really a solid investment is is usually far from it it involves uh, knowledge and due diligence and, uh, and and time you know time is one of the biggest factors in investment uh, so when you're trying to create shortcuts sometimes it's gonna blow in your face with scammy people and scammy investments. So what are you reckon about this, Sandy? Uh, you know, this is just not my universe. I have I have yeah. nothing intelligent to say about it, but I'm really still well, trying it doesn't to stop me it. from remarking about it, Sandy. It it, it uh I, I'm still trying to picture what it what a <clears throat> libertarian hippie looks like. Um, well just go over to Puerto Rico, some in their last conference. Um one of the reasons why I bring that, because I'll I'm I'm locking two worlds. I have another business and it's a startup. And so I'm in the kind of boot camp startup world as well. And when I've got when I've gone to some online um, meetings and before that, um, if, the younger people that I was mixing with, and that's literally anybody because of my age, are uh, um, they're they're on their smartphone bragging about the increase of their um, Bitcoin or their digital currency. Um, how they've gone up, uh, um, and, um, and then it loses half the next day, <laughs> yeah. You know, my, my um, husband did speculate that, that uh, you know, w what all of the geeky people should do is mine Bitcoin so that there's so much that it's devalued, so that then, like, the big Bitcoin mining farms will go away and the uh, chips and the other technology will be available to the people who are trying to use it for something other than Bitcoin mining, because apparently you can't buy a good graphics card to save your life these days on account of the Bitcoin miners. Yeah, they're all at it. They're all at it. Is, is Andrew trying to say something to me? You're muted, Andrew. Hang on. Oh, he's, he's, he's got some evidence, hopefully. Oh, you say it. <laughs> oh God, it's a got graphics a, card. He's actually got a decent one. Where are you? Where did you get there? Yeah, he's Brian. Bitcoin mining. He's Bitcoin mining. Bitcoin. Well, what it's do you guys think about like you that are screwing up my flight simulator situation? It's nice. I can't it's get my nice hands on a good card. But if I'm talking about naivety and education around this kind of thing, watch. 
watch a film called The Laundromat with uh, Meryl Streep. It's phenomenal, and it, it shows you how easily people can be conned. It's about the insurance scam in, in America years ago when they were putting um, all the insurance companies in the Dominican Republic or wherever it is, and she's a, a lady that, unfortunately, her hus husband passed away with a dozen other people on a boat on a lake, and they found out that the boat wasn't insured because it was just a paper trail going to the Dominican Republic, and it's a... It's a fantastic film, so go and watch that, and it will show you the how many people were actually conned. It's based on a true story. Oh, so well, let's move on. And all the I oh, have some links that will give you a bigger insight in the the terror, which is Teva. Uh, um, so let, before we go on to our recommendations, I'm doing a webinar with Uncle Spencer on the ninth, the Friday, the second Friday of July. That be the ninth, and it'd be at ten thirty. Really? Um, AM Pacific Standard Time. So, what what are we going to be discussing, Uncle Spencer? I didn't know we were having a webinar on the ninth, but I will now be there. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that we were talking about continuing our journey, and what we're going to do now is probably talk about sales funnels. Sales sure, funnels sure, we're not going to be talking about Tether. We're going to be talking about how you can sell sales funnels with cryptocurrency. Yeah. Um, I think we took the topic that we had been discussing on this show and we put it into play. It's like, how do you make sense of what available page builders or other tools there are for your sales funnel? And I think that it's a generic enough topic, but it'll be valuable enough that whichever one you use, you can find a solution. But it would be something that's attractive to the audience that we have here because at this stage, everybody who uses WordPress at one point or another is either an implementer or they're an end user or could be both. And if you're an implementer, you're making a big mistake by not taking advantage of the plug and play nature of the stack that's available versus, let's say, using old fashioned HTML or CSS, PHP to code solutions, or even using some of the old fashioned themes. Because again, as we talked about, you're, you're building future proof in if you start with today's latest and greatest solution versus just one plugin or one theme could be the Frankenstein monster that takes down the site in a couple months and not like physically but i mean takes it down like you can't go forward where everybody else easily can and then, so, and then you would have to send in a support ticket to tom's team wouldn't you i mean you know that's that i mean that's tom obviously can speak to this but th the nature of the hosting relationship is no longer about the hosting it's that's the commodity it's about what goes around it uh, that really is important and i want to say too I'm not picking on WP Engine every week, but I want to say that because I didn't comment on the other story. Not much. You that, know, not much. You know. that, that the problem that I see with WP Engine at the moment is that they are, it's not to the level of tether, but they are still premising their business upon a falsehood. The falsehood is. Uh, I want to make it clear that me personally do not link WP Tonic in any shape or form to Tevo. This is our totally Spencer's nobody, own nobody. attitude. I want to make that totally clear to the um, to anybody but, listening. But to I, I mean, just just if you think about it in terms of the conversation we'll have for the, the webinar or just in general what we talk about today, there was a time when phone companies could sell text messaging for 25 cents a text because they claimed the data on the network was too expensive, blah, blah, blah. We've subsequently learned, and now would laugh at that, that that was both a lie and just a marketing technique. It was true when WP Engine was created and some of the other companies as well, that managed hosting meant that you took a very complex cPanel WHM and you put it into a container and you had people that really helped you integrate the difficult to do stuff, which had to do with your email and your uh, getting your, uh, uh, you know, the, the protection scheme around your, um, you know, security and so forth. But what it is today is that they're really selling something that is putting kids into a school bus and caching and varnishing it. Whereas other progressive companies, and I would say Tom is referring to this, are doing the things that people really need from managed hosting, which is how do you actually operate your business efficiently and you get the full transparency of what the hosting environment is without a bunch of artificial metrics. For example, I find it offensive that people are still being charged per page visit. Me too. I find it, I find it offensive that you have to call into support to force them to turn off varnish and caching 
on your WooCommerce or dynamic content or marketing automation website in order to diagnose what's being broken by their own hosting and that you're paying a premium for that. I find it offensive in 2021 that people are still selling sandbox as a tool when a sandbox is the opposite of a benefit. You can't have a fully functional membership site, make a copy in a sandbox, make changes, and then reintroduce that. It doesn't work that way because in the meantime, the membership website kept going and everything changed. Five years ago, only people cared about, only thing they cared about was the theme. That was a visual. So like that's the kind of stuff that really bugs me. And I think that what they're doing is uh, intelligent from a business model and maybe the rest of us will benefit by the details of what the marketplace has to offer. But let's be honest, they're doing it because they want to IPO and they want to IPO before the Wizard of Oz is discovered to be the Wizard of Oz. As soon as that curtain gets pulled back, it's just like text messaging. Companies don't sell text messaging anymore because they know the public figured it out. Tether is figured out. WP Engine is a great group of people, human beings and everything, but it's unfair, I think, for them. Well, to what I would say, uh, this is my personal position, WP Engine are engaged in um, a business model where Tether, in my opinion, is a criminal enterprise run by criminals. It, it's definitely not. The, there's no... I have nothing but the utmost respect for the way the people operate and their personal credibility. And in fact, Jason Cohen is one of my personal yeah. favorite smart. That's why I get a bit woozy but when when you try and link WP Engine with I'm Teva. I'm saying that we live in a world where all information is known. And as a marketer, it bothers me because that's what's happening yeah. with Tether. It's a marketing play, albeit criminal, which is not that dissimilar when you talk about why not sell people on the real thing that you're actually helping them with? Well, and then, you're going to do a report uh, on it, you know. I, I think we're going to move on. And, of course, WP Engine, if you've got any complaints, please send them to Spencer. Not you more. know, the, I feel uh, like so – Can I just there say one go. last thing? Sorry, because I was so hard-sounding on them. I just want to say one thing. This show is not for me or you or anybody else to sit there and be mean or pick on people unnecessarily. But what I do feel is that well, nobody would to, listen to it. Let me just say this because I want to. This is important for you not to get a hard time from somebody. Okay, what we talked about once before. Andrew signed on board with this. There's certain people, and I put myself in that group in the WordPress community who have been here since day one. Who, if we were not true to our real sense of who we are as people and as business people. I think that everybody should be upfront and honest and willing to speak the truth at all times, even if it hurts feelings, because otherwise we're doing a disservice to the people that we're really, you know, attracting. And more importantly, we're doing disservice to ourselves as human beings. I'm not saying anything that is not factually based, but sometimes the facts hurt. When or you put a magnifying glass, help, on. even if it hurts ourselves, when we've when we've realised we've actually made a mistake and we put our hands up and go, guys, we were wrong yeah. to do that. Yeah, and I yes, and I'm the first person. Who wants to I, I, I take that. I take your position, um, but obviously, as a publisher and the controlling individual of this show, I I have some legal responsibilities, um, which you probably are very well well. Well, aware we're, because of, we're not being we're not today doing uh, anything like uh, the no. other stuff. We're so just, can we move? Can we move on to? Our recommendations of the week. Mine is WP Reset. Uh, um, I use Reset. It's a great product. They've got a special on on, on Asuma. Go and have a look at it. Um, um, I suggest that it's a good it's a good special offer. So, Andrew, have you got anything you want to recommend to? Oh, I have. It's it's called uh, Orderable.com. Uh, it's a it's a JV. I've never two. heard of it. Hey. I've never heard of it. Well, it's new. That's why. It's a soft launch. It's Go it's a, jo a joint venture between... Oh, I um, thought you said audio. No, orderable. Orderable. That, that, so not a bad joke if I said audio, but it's orderable. And it's basically a, a thing where you can add um, products and services for pickup or, and or delivery. But I actually used it so that a garage could could take bookings for MOTs and they're going to they're going to integrate ca integrate um calendars with it so it's going to replace all of the scheduling apps there's no doubt in my mind i've had a long chat with james kemp on twitter private messaging saying 
you know, once you put calen a calendar sync into this, then all scheduling apps are just going to go, what the heck happened? It took me an hour after reading all the docs, including reading the docs and watching the videos. It took me an hour to put together an MOT booking system with Orderable, and I love it. It's got a lifetime deal. Get on it. It's it's gonna it's gonna just expand and it's gonna destroy Calendly and schedulers and all yeah, these. Please, things. Andrew, make sure the link is in um, our Slack. It is, and I haven't even put my affiliate link in there. How good am I? Well, please do. That. You you know, you're quite um, so Vito. Go on. Are you? I'm oh, sorry. Wiki wiki Vito. Uh, um, so Vito, uh, you got anything you want to recommend to the listeners and viewers? Yes, uh, so I'm recommending uh, the designspace.co. This is a company by Melissa Lum. Uh, and um, I've actually did uh, some uh, some stuff with her in our group uh, the other week that kind of got me uh, more familiar with what she's doing. And it kind of came to my mind after we were talking about the um, uh, theme shops and what they're doing. So she started a, as a theme shop, building the themes for, uh, for photographers and stuff. Uh, but now she's uh, offering a whole kinds of different stuff for uh, uh, people that want to learn how to build templates, not necessarily themes. Uh, she also has a tool uh, that um, it's a plugin that allows you to wrap up um, uh, all of your different um, page templates into an, install an installable zip. Uh, and that kind of takes all of the theme settings, whatever theme that you have, whether it's Astra or whatever, uh, as well as the templates and the pages from Elementor or from Divi or whatever, and it just deploys it with a zip file. So you can basically design a website, download it into a zip, and just drop it into a different website or sell that zip as a, a, as a full website, really. Uh, really cool, uh, the design space .co. Oh, great. Tom, have you got any product, service, anything oh, that's got Site Presser is the name of this particular tool, yeah. but the design space has it all. All right, make sure it's in um, our Slack channel. So, Tom, if you... oh, yeah, Andrew's, uh, wa Andrew's wagging his finger. Tom, no, it's, only, it's only because I, I sold page builder cloud and layoutscloud.com to um, sitepresser.io, so I know them very well, and they come highly recommended from me as well. I love them. There we go. You get a double. Sorry, Tom, got anything yeah, else? Sorry, Tom. Uh, these guys are really great. It's human presence. Um, they are a Shopify plugin that has built a WordPress plugin that stops uh, form spam. And they don't support every form builder, but they use artificial intelligence to determine if it's a person or a bot. And um, it's actually this technology is built into our hosting um, stack, but you can go get the plugin. And, and if you deal with like form spam or bots, or any of that type of stuff. Oh, yeah, nobody deals with words. This is a great plugin for those ones that are not easily subverted by like the honey pots and you know get get through captcha and all that kind of stuff. Tom, did you have to swear? Yeah, you, know, you you mentioned Shopify. You know, who for God's right. sake, this is uh, worth well, I, I, I thought this uh, word was captcha. You know, that's what I did. I thought that triggered you, Jonathan. I thought that well, yeah, was going to trigger you. Yeah, well, not this week. I, I think I did enough swearing last week, actually. I had, I had some remarks. <laughs> oh, God, he's really got it in for me for some reason. Um, Sally. <laughs> Sally, yeah. have you got anything you want to recommend? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, something that I used with a uh, client to solve a problem that had been, like, making me tear my hair out. Uh, in the event uh, that you need to uh, integrate your WordPress site with your client's uh, SharePoint or Azure AD or otherwise Microsoft-based intranet, uh, WPO365.com uh, makes the tools that will do that. So what we needed to do was allow... Uh, students at a particular institution to log in to the WordPress site, which has some uh, library kinds of things available, course readings and so on, uh, with their uh, Microsoft logins. Uh, and uh, once the uh, <clears throat> IT team got the Azure AD uh, end of it set up with the appropriate API keys, it, it's dead easy. 
uh, there's just a Microsoft login screen pops up for those uh, pages. The students log in. Uh, the plugin creates a new WordPress user. You can set it up to sync so that if you remove people from your Active Directory, it will then also remove them from WordPress. Uh, I could have used that on a couple of projects. That well, we recently... I mean, this is the kind of thing where I know nothing about Active Directory. I do not want to know anything about Active Directory, but what I know about you're, it is that you're if just I missing out on live, up, Sally. You're just missing out on live in general. Um, over to and Spencer's just a typical Scorpio, you know, he really resents any form of, of control or any sense of, you're just a cat on a roof, aren't you, Spencer? You're, it's you're, taken, so, taken, you're such a 50, typical... 54 years to come to realize I am what I am what I am, right. you know. So you got, anything, got anything you want, to, you want to recommend, Spencer? I do. Um... This is a good plugin. It's free. It's called the Free Soul Deactivate Plugins. And what it does is it solves the problem that we we're just discussing today because I've been experiencing this times 100 this last week or two. If you have one of the page builders that doesn't play nice with something else you're using uh, on a particular page or post or something, this plugin gives you a very elegant way inside the post type to disable that particular page builder. Here's why. Some of the ones, like I mentioned, I'll call them out, the, the naughty ones, like Oxygen, are very popular, but they've decided or their authors decided not to play by the WordPress best practices and avoid loading their crap into every single part of, of every WordPress site. And so you have scenarios where they conflict with other plugins, and this allows you to turn it off. Oh, my God, it's a... That, oh, Sally, Sally, you, that, you that have the, on your baby. You've got okay, babies Sally, now. Sally. The Sally, 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 Sally. Right? Cece has totally been upstage. What oh, you've been totally upstage, Sally. What an adorable baby. Uh, so, God, you know, the, the, I'm so pleased. It's so big already. My, well, my ratings are going to skyrocket thing. now. They're just going to skyrocket now. You know, cats and babies, <laughs> listeners and viewers. What more can you ask for? You know, you know you're not going to find this on the... Oh, oh, Tom's just gone. He had an out upstate. And Sally's on the phone. There we go. So <laughs> I, I think we're getting to the end of the show. Um, um, uh, um, so, Andrew, what is the best way for people to find out more about you and what you're up to? Uh, you can find me at Arnie Palmer uh, on Twitter, and uh, you can find me in a WordPress group, which is um, let me find let me find it. Hang on, because I can't remember; it's too long. Uh, Self managed WordPress by Grid Pain. So come and say hello to me there. How's that? If you can, if you can type that without looking it in the show notes i'll give you a prize this is of yours uh rav vito uh um any, yes what's the uh, best way you of finding find you at uh, atarim.io uh, or search uh, or connect with me on twitter vito peleg did I get the impression that your better half was telling you a message that you've been on this show too long and it was yes, time to I actually... Out. Yeah, I, I did get that impression. Oh, here she is, the better she half. Is the better I, know, half. I, know, I, know, I know the logic of the female mind. <laughs> uh, um, so, uh, <laughs> oh, God. Spencer, uh, how can people find out more about you and what you're up to, Spencer? Uh, WPLaunchFi.com and everybody else disappeared, <laughs> listeners and viewers. But they're, they're dropping back. like flies. Yeah, they are because it's this warm piece. That's why I was trying to keep it going, it, moving. I think it's the the drought uh, um, on the west coast. Sally yes. might have gotten dehydrated. Well, it's been an hour and nearly twenty minutes. We're a bit yeah. like twenty minutes over, even with your moving on. You've done a rubbish job. <laughs> oh, Rob, thanks a lot. Uh, I think that's high compliments coming from you, Andrew. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll see you next week for another roundtable show. Bye. Cheers, guys. Well done.